Hello, my name is Savannah Dorset, and I'm a librarian with Houston Public Library and welcome to Book Chat, which just like it sounds, it means we're going to be talking about books. This is the month of May, which if you weren't aware is Asian Pacific, Isl Asian Pacific Islander American Heritage Month, which celebrates the unique cultures, traditions, heritage, history, and contributions to the United States of those of Asian and Pacific Islander heritage. This includes those not only from the Asian continent, so countries including China, Japan, India, Vietnam, but also Pacific Islands ranging from the Philippines, New Guinea, the Hawaiian Islands, so in short, a ton of really wonderful, rich countries and traditions and books. We've got some lovely titles for you here. And if this is no longer the month of May, well, still check them out because it's never a bad time for good books. This is going to be celebrating stories to screen. So these are books that have been adapted to either the small screen or the big screen. So you can not only read the books, but then watch the movie and see how it compares. The book's always better. Our first title is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, which is currently available on Hulu for your binging pleasures. And in this book, Celeste Ng examines the cracks in the seemingly perfect facade of a neighborhood in Shaker Heights, Ohio, when a white family chooses to adopt a Chinese baby and the ensuing custody battle that unfolds when the birth mother changes her mind and it sort of throws the neighborhood into chaos with various factions and secrets all coming out this is a really great title for those who want to look at maybe some really complicated issues involving race and class and interracial adoption and a really great title for maybe some conversations about some somewhat sticky ethical issues and then you can read it and talk about it and watch the series and see how it translates. Our next title is maybe not as much of a blockbuster, but still worth checking out. The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri, who won the Pulitzer for her short story, Interpreter of Maladies. And in this book, the Ganguly family immigrates to Massachusetts from India, and they settle down, they start a family, including their firstborn son, who was given the somewhat unusual name of Gogol after the Russian author Nikolai Gogol, which is someone who is significant to the father and the significance of the name sort of unfolds over time. All little Gogol knows though is that he has a weird name which makes him stand out even more when all he wants is to just be an ordinary American kid. So all of these things, his identity is you know, the child of immigrants, his weird name, it all sort of twists around in his mind into why can't I just fit in? And slowly over time, he finds peace with his name, with his identity, with his place in his family, his place in the United States, and you just sort of get to follow him along on this journey, told with wonderful, rich, precise prose by Jumbo Lahiri. It was adapted into a film starring Cal Penn, and it did receive a lot of positive, critis positive critics' response and was a bit of a, you know some festival buzz, but just was not a box office breaking huge mega hit. So maybe now is a really great time to explore this sort of hidden gem Read the book, see the movie, see what you think, which one's better. Our third title is Dun Dun Dun, Dun The Grandmother of Them All, The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. And in this book, a group of women in San Francisco, originally from China, get together every week to play mahjong together. It is not just 
fun and games for them. This is a chance for them to come together, to relax, to maybe vent a little, to share you know, what's going on in their lives and their hardships and their triumphs. And sadly, now one of the members of the group has passed away and her place has been taken by her adult daughter. And now the daughter is sort of learning more about her mother and who her mother was as a person instead of just being, you know, a mom and about her mom's friendships and the things that her mom has been through and definitely gains a more nuanced understanding of herself and her background and the legacy of her family. This is a great title for people who love books about intergenerational conflict, about relationships between mothers and daughters, and about the incredible power of female friendships. It was, of course, adapted into a huge hit movie in 1993, and it was somewhat noteworthy because when this movie came out, it was only the second film ever telling specifically Asian American stories with a predominantly Asian American cast, so not Caucasian actors, sadly, playing Asians. Uh, the first being Flower Drum Song in 1961, so from 1961 till 1993. And there was a lot of great hope and expectation that maybe this would lead to a change in Hollywood and more diverse stories, which sadly was just not the case. Because after Toilet Club in 1993, it would be another 25 years before we would have another movie telling Asian American stories with a predominantly Asian American cast, and that was Crazy Rich Asians and the whole Crazy Rich trilogy by Kevin Kwan, which almost bears no need for introduction because it was so huge, but we're going to talk about it anyway. So Crazy Rich Asians tells the story of Rachel, who is an American-born Chinese woman, and she is going to be traveling to Singapore to meet her boyfriend's family, which is already kind of a scary idea. And it's even more terrifying when she finds out that her boyfriend Nick's family is rich. Super rich. Yoga studios on jets, I'm gonna buy out this nightclub, rich. So what was already kind of a scary idea now is utterly terrifying to her. But slowly over time she realizes that despite all the designer everything and name dropping and staying in five star hotels, that they're just, you know, a regular family. And just like any other family, they sometimes drive you insane. And so she sort of has to figure out her role in the family and her identity and also staying true to herself and her background. So a very uh, understandable story wrapped up in a bit of a, a fluffy package. So between these two, 25 years, between these and Flower Drum Song, another 30 years. So in short, Hollywood, do better. There are tons of really great stories out there waiting to be you know, turned into films. Ask your friendly librarian for ideas. We can help you. And as for our HPL customers, we can help you too. We are available via chat, email reference, telephone reference. If you're looking for books to read, either in the month of May or any other time of year, we're available. Just visit our website, houstonlibrary.org, click where it says get a custom book list, and we will send you titles based on your likes and interests. This has been Book Chat. I'm Savannah Dorset. See you next time.